pulled this thing out of the closet. This is the BioCord 6000. We did a, a, a video about this a couple years ago. It's been sitting there, but I forgot, you know, despite the sort of tongue-in-cheek nature of that video and the weird form factor, this is a really good sounding cassette deck. So I thought I'd give it a try, but unfortunately a couple of problems has developed over the years. One is fast forward. Rewind's working, fast forward's not working. The other is the right channel appears to be inter intermittent. Well, that's working. Let's try it again. Ah. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yep. This one is not. Sometimes if I turn it off and on, it'll come back. So a couple problems to fix. So let's get into this thing and fix it. So one of the cool things about this is the sort of garage door aspect. You just lift this thing up and then it hinges over and can kind of just sit there. And then you're ready to work, which is great. But to fix the fast forward, we'll probably have to get into the this little area, which is the cassette mechanism. We showed all this in the previous video. Okay, so the good news is I think I figured out at least where the problem is using this pencil eraser by just sort of probing the board. Right up in here somewhere is a loose connection that's causing the uh, intermittent right channel. So I've looked at a bunch of these pins with a magnifying glass and I don't necessarily see anything that is obvious. So I may have to take this board out, but it's numbered sort of like a game of Battleship. And the most response I get is from uh, D3. So I can, I can sort of touch somewhere in there and make it turn on and off. So I think the problem's in this area. Can't see anything obvious. I may just try to take this board out. There's no screws here. It looks like, like based on that, it looks like the whole thing could slide right and then pop out of there. I'm going to turn off the power and give that a try. Uh, I may have to look up the service manual because I think it is available online and see how that comes apart. All right, so this board is a piece here. So let's see what we can do. Just want to say for anybody who happens to be watching this, this is not the way to do it. I figure it out in a second, but you're not supposed to slide this board out until you've detached the front panel, which I figure out in just a minute. There we go, okay. There's a plug over here that's connecting these two large boards. I wonder if this has to come out. There's gotta be a way to get this thing out. It's... So upon further examination, I popped this back into place. There was a screw here and a screw here, which looks like it holds on that front panel. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, maybe see it. I'll take out those two screws. Maybe this, oh yeah, this front panel slides down. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's gonna be it. So. Let me go ahead and finish taking out the one over here. This one's kind of hard to get to. It's kind of down in there. Just a couple of screws. One there, there. And then that should get... This piece should come off now. Aha, there we go. Okay, oh, there's a relay right there. I bet that's the relay that's causing the problem. Okay, let me reposition this so we can see it. Problem is when you hit the relay, it causes the channel to short out. So I think it's a, a dirty contact on the relay. So I'm gonna see if I can pop the cover off that relay and just sort of clean it up a little bit. Maybe put some deoxid or rub some paper in amongst the contacts and see if that helps. That's definitely the problem. It has a removable cover. It's got a little black thing you press in. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so now I should be able to clean those contacts. The end of that paper is soaked in deoxid. Let's hope it stays stiff enough to get it underneath the relay contacts. Ah, come on. Don't want to gum up the relay. There we go. All right, so I got that in between those contacts. Going to yank it out of there. And try over here. There we go. All right, so I've run some deoxide on that side. 
Now to get it on the bottom side of the relay. Seems like it works. I'll just clean it a little bit more and then put the cover back on. Once you have the front piece off, you can slide out the circuit board as we were trying to do earlier. Now, I didn't really want to do this, but unfortunately when I was playing around with it, I loosened the little slider thing so that the control became disconnected from the slider. So I'm going to set them all the way to the bottom and then uh, put these back on so they'll actually hook in with the, the front piece. Like these were just loose. So I had to, re I have to, I had to take this off again just to reset that. But so I got the, the cassette mechanism out. It's again, really easy to get out. Just three screws and two plugs. And I think like when I originally had messed with this a couple of years ago, I used this uh, white lithium grease, which I saw recommended in one of the forums. And I think it may have just dried up or something. And maybe I need to get different grease. It will, I did, when I was taking this out, I hooked it up and it will fast forward while on its side. But it won't fast, like, it'll fast forward like this, but it won't fast forward like that. I left the uh, power hooked up and just was trying it different positions. So some something under here, either the grease is not letting it engage fully or one of those rubber rubber tires underneath there is messed up. Anyway, we're going to take it apart and see if we can figure out uh, what's up with that. Take off the belts. Now, let's see. This thing probably has one of these little... Uh, yeah, it's got one of these little, whatever you, those things are called, those little washers on the other side that need to come off. Yeah, I don't really know of a better way to get these out of there just other than with a fingernail, but it's got that sort of washer on there that holds the back side of the, or the front side of the cap stand, and then you can pull that out. And sometimes there's washers here and there, so you got to watch out for those. Okay, so now you can see kind of where my greasing job last time sort of maybe dried up, but I never really got under there, but there's there's a wheel under there that I think is the one that's involved in fast forward. So I need to just really clean this, this stuff a little bit more thoroughly. Okay, so this is a sensor board that goes in there somehow and I guess senses things, part of the wonderful world of electronics here. Hopefully that'll just come right out of there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's the sensor. Oh, that's kind of interesting. What are those things for? All right, so then this, I suppose I'm gonna have to take off springs to get underneath there. Gosh, that's a pain. But, you know, why not? All right, so that spring comes loose there. All right, let's get this little clip off here, which will be this. Oh, man. This thing should come out now, but I gotta remember this, this thing, that I, I took this off that goes between here and here. So that goes over there. Now this screw needs to come up. Will it come up? Oh yeah, that, that's that whole idler mechanism. Okay, I gotta remember where that is. Good thing I'm taking photos. Okay. Well, okay, so there's that. This wheel could use a good cleaning. Now we should be able to take this thing off and see what's underneath that. Three more screws to that. I don't know. This may have to come off too, because that, well, that well, that's got to come out. See, taking these clips off is a lot easier than getting them back on. Definitely. This now can come off. Go over there. Now this metal piece can come off, revealing the whatever tires or whatever are underneath. The take up reels are on the other side of this metal piece and they were kind of being held in place a little bit by the reel brakes uh, and I got it to, by loosening the reel brakes or just holding them back with my fingers, I could bend it back good enough to get in there and clean it. Oh uh, yeah. Well at least I can see the wheel now. Yeah, there's a little rubber wheel in there that could probably be cleaned. So I think the way that this thing works is when the solenoid engages the mechanism, these little white things are the reel brakes, so those come loose. This thing comes up over and hits the thing and makes it fast forward. So what I've done is I've taken this off and oiled that so this pivot doesn't have anything blocking it. I've kind of greased that. I've greased that. I've cleaned off the little rubber wheel back there. That rubber wheel may just be gone, but I'm going to put it back together and see if it'll actually fast forward now. Uh, fast forward. Where's fast forward? Yay! We are fast forwarding. See if we still rewind. Stop. 
Do we still rewind? Do we still play? Oh, wait. Hang on a second. Okay. Well, that stinks. So, I appear to have fixed fast forward, but I broke play. So, let me go take a look at everything and, uh, that's not a good sign. Let's see, let's take this back out. What could I have done different, wrong with the play? Hang on. So here's the problem. When I had initially put it back together, this break right here was had, had popped outside there. So this little piece goes on the inside of this reel. I guess a good thing to do is just to test the brakes. Before you put this back together, you can you can verify these take up reels are loose. If this one's engaged, yeah, you know, there's loose, and if both of them are engaged, it should also be loose. So yes, I had in fact introduced a play problem by actually positioning one of the brakes wrong. Um, all these cassette decks have different little brakes to stop the reels from just spilling out tapes. I think I like the Yamaha design the best. It's kind of like a car, the brake is disengaged unless you engage it, whereas on this Bang & Olufsen, the brakes are always engaged unless the solenoid is down and they're disengaged. But anyway, that about wraps the brake problem up. All right, that seems to work. We got the relay working properly, we got fast forward working, rewind working, play working, everything works. It's time to put it all back together. Well, that about wraps up this repair of the BO Cord 6000, a very unusual looking cassette deck. If you want to see our original video, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, that video was not monetized due to a movie clip, so I would appreciate any sort of subscriptions or likes or comments that you can leave because uh, that provides us some incentive to keep doing these videos. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.